The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Hi, my name is Leo Connors, and welcome to The Ring and All Other Sports. Tonight, I got a very special guest, Steve the Turtle Weiner. It's a pleasure to be here, sir. Thanks, Steve. It's a pleasure to have you here. Believe me, Thank there's you. a lot to cover in an hour. That's so, an understatement. Definitely. So let's get right into it. <laughs> Fan questions. Jay Rubin, you can answer this or you don't have to, okay? Okay. Ever witness a fall victim to quack bullying? I think we know what that means, right? I've heard some stuff, but to be completely honest, Quack, Mike Quackabush has always been a gentleman right. to me. And quite honestly, I don't think I would be as much known in professional wrestling because if I if it wasn't for Jakara and Mike Quackabush. True. So I, Absolutely. Have, I have nothing but positive things to say yep. about Yeah, so Quack. he's always been great to you. That's yeah. awesome. Brandon Belangia, former guest of the show. Who's your favorite Ninja Turtle? <laughs> oh, that's a toss-up. People might... I think it's Raphael because it, that's the color of the turtle suit I wear. Right. But I would have to say probably because of me being autistic, it's either Michelangelo because I love blue Leonardo. Okay. But, yeah, but, I was hoping you were saying Lee, even though but, that's not uh, my name. Just, just Leo. Just to make sure I <laughs> give him props. Awesome Donatello. Nice. All right. Uh, Scott Anthony Shooter wants to know, thoughts on associating with Bill Clinton? And how did that relationship begin? I did see a picture of you and your yes, family with um, Mr. Clinton. This is a very the former president. This is a very complicated story, and I wish I could get into it more. But the truth is, this is more of my father's story, who is oh, okay. no longer with us. My father was um, very close with President Clinton, and the, as far as mm -hmm. I know, most of my family still is. And I would need to have a sit down conversation with my family to learn the whole story. I wish right. I could give you more information about that, but the that's sad truth okay. is, that is the best I can tell you. But that's still pretty cool, though. All, that you, I will, I, you guys... all I will tell you is, there is one good story I can tell you that. After my father passed five years ago, President Clinton and Secretary Clinton um, got off the campaign trail to attend my father's funeral. And I spoke at um, my father's funeral and got a standing ovation before the president. So it was very unique to see my father basically get a presidential motorcade to his last ride. That's pretty awesome. I miss him every day, but I'm, I'm, very, sure you I'm very grateful to President Clinton for all he's done for my family. That's awesome, Steve. Okay, Scott has more questions. How did the tib how did the turtle gimmick originate? That's a great question. Well, which what, what answer could I give? You know what? I will go with the answer that is age appropriate. Okay. The honest <laughs> the truth is that when I was growing up, the the creature that scared me the most as a child was it, Pennywise. Right. And at the time, um, I was I don't read books very often, but I do remember this was around the time the internet started becoming a thing, and I remember learning that. The, it, the character, its uh, enemy was a turtle. Um, I did not know the turtle's name was Maturin. I believe I'm pronouncing that correct. Right. Yep. But at, I figured if a turtle, since I was a fan of the Ninja Turtles, and if a turtle scared that away, I would just become the thing that scared that clown. Nice. All right. Uh, Scott has two more questions. What is the one thing you're proud of within your wrestling career if it all stopped tomorrow? The fact that despite my limited in-ring ability that I am somehow known and respected among my peers as yep. an equal independent wrestler like the likes of American Dragon and Loki right. and Samoa Joe and Mike Quackabush and Chris Hero and the late Larry Sweeney and JT Dunn and Bob Evans and Mike yep. Bennett and Drew Gulak and all those wrestlers that have eventually at one point or another got signed to a big thing. And even if I, I don't expect to ever get signed in professional wrestling, and I am at peace with that because all I ever wanted to be was just one of the boys. Right. I mean, Scott Hall said it best, and I guess I lived up to the reverse uh, motto of his. You either in the business to make friends or to make money. He was in it to make money, but right. I, I already have money, so I was in it to make friends. There you go. All right. Okay. Can you name anyone that you have shared the ring with? that you've gained valuable knowledge and training? I'm sure there's many, but is there anybody that just sticks out the most? I would have to say uh, Drew Gulak. Uh, nice. I don't know if the match was ever, as a matter of fact, I think Beyond Wrestling did release this match. It was during the time where we actually did a, a 
tapings for the boys that we released to the public at the New England Wrestling Academy. I've seen some of those matches on I YouTube. I regret that I could not give Drew a match that stood up to his caliber, but he was a professional in the ring, and I learned that I have a lot to go to practice technical stuff. But I don't think people will associate technical wrestling with Steve the Turtle Whiner, but you'll be surprised when I bust out like an arm drag or something right? once in a while. That's awesome. And uh, Drew Gulak is so he's good. One of my favorite people. And he's helped a lot of guys in his area anyway. So Absolutely. With I, the CD, I, when he was in CZW, I think he was the head trainer for a while. Yes, he was. Right. And I think at one point he was a co-head trainer, Jakara. I could be wrong, though. But he was a... No, he probably he, was, yeah. For like over 15 years before he got signed with right. World Wrestling Entertainment, he was one of the best names in the Beyond Wrestling and Evolve and... And CZW and right. all the independents. He was an unsung hero, and I'm glad he's finally getting his due. But I will say this: a small critique, Drew. I love you to death, but I'm that orange gear. <laughs> not, not, not what I'm used to when I associate with you. But then again, this is coming from a guy that wears a giant neon green suit. So who, what do I have to say? Right. <laughs> uh, spoiler alert: I had heard he was an ant. But that's neither here nor there. Because hey, uh, I always wondered who they were. Are you serious? I've seen Drew Gulak and the ants talk all the time. Really? But as separate so people. He wasn't an ant. That's it. All right. Dan Tanaka, remember Dan? Oh, yes, I do. All right. Can you, Hi, Dan. Can, can you please tell the Framingham Motel 6 story? Oh, I I've been waiting for this one. Yes. Put on your seatbelt, peoples, because this is going to be a bumpy ride. All right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> back when. Uh, uh, Slam Tech Wrestling, the now defunct Slam Tech Wrestling. Bob Evans. Bob Evans. Yep. Used to be a part of New England Championship Wrestling. We had a two day event in Framingham, Mass. for the Iron Eight. And we stayed over that night at the local Motel Six. Um, some guys got one room. And I believe it was me, Rocco Abruzzi, Drew Donovan, and uh, Rich Bass in another room. Now, I'm not the most energetic person after a long event, but, and which is saying something because I have so much energy right. when I'm depending on the situation when I when I do or do not take my meds. Spoiler, by the way, I'm legitimately autistic, which is a conversation we get into a little bit. But yeah. here's this beef of it. I was going to bed, and um, everyone who knows Rocco Bruzzi is Yes. Gonna, uh, for some reason, I was asleep. Rocco decides, because we were in a two-bedroom room, I was asleep, <laughs> and Rocco decides he's going to jump from one bed onto me. Now, <laughs> think of the astronomical timing this is about to take. <laughs> As he's jumping in the air, I wake up because I'm hearing something. I'm like, oh, no, Rocco Brucey. And I'm trying to get out of the way. He, he crashed off the bed through the glass window, genetting it. Whoa. <laughs> Apparently, and the reason we didn't get arrested or have to pay for anything, as far as I understand, is because of some sort of insurance thing where we were not liable. Oh. <laughs> I, or possibly that the owner was... um. Not a full status citizen. I'm not ah, sure. Ah, that could have been Keep it. In mind, too, this right? was like almost 20 years ago. Right? So could have been a wrestling fan. Too. It could have been a wrestling fan, but something happened <laughs> that. Uh, <laughs> but I, to this day, I don't know why he did it. But it was hysterical as it caused both rooms of wrestlers to start laughing nonstop for like 20 minutes. <laughs> Milk All and right. cookies were coming out of people's noses. Nice. <laughs> All right, Teresa Kerr, Delilah Hayden. Oh, most memorable moments. Hmm. Let's see, where do I start? Oh, uh, give me a promotion. I'll give you my most Okay, uh, interspecies wrestling. Oh, that's easy one. Being able uh, in 2019 to drive up to Canada and compete in another country for the very first time, which is interesting because there was a point in time where I thought this was never going to happen. And this right. literally was 10 years in the making. And on my 14th anniversary, they announced that I was officially going to be coming to Canada. Nice. It was one of the most peaceful drives I've ever had. I literally made it a four-day, two-day drive to and from because I wanted to enjoy the experience. Um, and I did. And I wish I could have given the Los Dummies a better match, but it was fun to see a turtle and a hare team up for one time. And also, the, if I could have gotten merchandise across the border, um, I would have probably sold out, but really? I was just there for the memory. And to that, to lead into me getting booked in Canada a yeah. month later for Fighting Back 9, the, the benefit for for raising money for cancer that Fighting Back and C4 does every year, that they unite with like all the independent promotions right. in Canada. And I highly recommend when this show does happen again uh, this year, fingers crossed, that you anyone right. can donate money, please go to Fighting Back on Twitter and keep up to date, or C4 on Twitter and Facebook, and keep up to date on how you can help raise money for cancer awareness. Because it doesn't just help raise awareness and scientific research for cancer in Canada, it goes right. all over the world. It just happens to be based in Canada. So please check out Fighting Back's uh, 
Twitter and Facebook page and C Forge. And of course, it is BC Wrestling. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and by the way, we're still working our way up to build up to 100 block, 100. Uh, one million blocks. Wow. We, Interspecies Wrestling is trying to put on the most ridiculous match of all time. Now, I don't know the details, but all I do know, it involves gaining one million blocks. And I can only say blocks because we're not allowed for legal reasons to say the toy name. Oh, okay. So please go to one million blocks.com. I think I'm getting that right. Or at least go to Interspecies, Interspecies Wrestling's Facebook and yes. Twitter page to learn more about how, because once we hit one million blocks and it becomes safe to wrestle again. Yeah. You're going to see probably the craziest weapons nice. match of all time. All right. Now, how about another promotion with memorable moments? Chikara. Oh, um, Chikara. I've had so many memorable moments from wrestling outside New England for the very first time here, which is probably the best story I can tell. Okay. Um, how I got into Chikara was very complicated. Um, I learned it through a magazine, and my good friend Kevin Fecto, uh, out in New York. He's not okay. a wrestler, but he did actually work one wrestling show. Uh, and I can't remember the name. Um, I think it's S-O-L. It was basically like an X-rated rated Jakarta. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's all I can say. Right. Um, but uh, Which I was on that show and ended up getting sick, but it's another story for another time. Uh, research people, when you do these interviews, you got to do research on your own career. <laughs> but, um, et cetera, et cetera, on July of 2007, I showed up for the first time. I, I literally, that's how I, same thing with Ring of Honor. I just walked in the door uninvited. And because of my, dis uh, no one threw me out and I basically got- You're a nice guy though, dude. Don't just say that. You are a good, I, you're a I, really I, nice guy. So don't I, say I yourself short, Steve. Seriously. I, I try not to, but sometimes- And you've made a name for yourself and people like you. Yes, but this is why I'm so grateful to Quack and Jakar. But basically along, I believe I owe it as well to, of course, Larry Sweeney. The Olsen right. twins and Bryce Remsburg and especially Chris here for giving me that interview tryout. That hello, people is here at Showdown in Christmas Land and a crisis. <laughs> God bless. And I basically started off as being the mean gene of Jakara, and then that like a month before the Young Lions Cup six, right. which is a class I'm very proud to be in. I regard whatever Chikara is remembered for, I will always be proud of being a part of that Young Lions Cup six class, especially night two. Right. Um, here's a story that many people don't know. My father was which I did not know until my stepmom revealed it without realizing and that's all I could say right but he was going in for major spine surgery oh wow uh, he, he, he didn't he, want anybody worried probably that's no why. but I was ready to like I literally had people drive me there I was ready to like get on a plane and like right fly out to make sure that I was with him but he told me to go through the match and I had a great match with Ophidian which is probably nice. is my best match in Jakara my first match was my best match that's saying something but um another yeah, I'm very grateful for that match, and I'm very grateful for Ophidian for giving me that match. I wish I won that match, but in the end, Ophidian was the better wrestler that night, and I should have had my, I wish I had a better shell that night. If you go back and watch that match from 2008, Young Lions Cup 6, Night 2, you can watch it on IWTV on the Jakar page. He didn't hypnotize you, did he, that night? You were, keep in mind, this was almost 13 years ago. I oh, so he it. probably didn't know how to do it yet. Well, don't forget, it was a singles match. <laughs> oh, okay. So he yeah, didn't he, have, didn't. he didn't have a Masa there to do I that. I was going to say, that's how you say his name, Amasis. Amasis. Yeah. Those guys are good. I saw them once when they wrestled for uh, PWU up in Philly. Oh, yeah. I missed the Ocinian portal. Uh, mm -hmm. another, another moment yeah. I had in Jakar, of course, is what happened 10 years ago when Larry Sweeney passed away, that fifth annual uh, King of Trios. Yes. Uh, those uh, pre-show meetings, I wish we filmed because they were very emotional. Right. Emotional, funny, let's go home. Right. And um, that basically, that's how they describe night one, two, and three pre-show. Uh, and I, I remember us all being around the ring to, you know, that whole Larry yeah. Sweeney tram, yeah. uh, a tribute. And uh, I remember being a part of the, actually, this could have been the year before. Uh, I could be, but I do treasure that 2011 King of Trios. But I believe the fourth trios, I teamed up with Dragon Dragon in oh, the wow. Godlet. Nice. Yes. I remember Dragon Dragon. It was came us up. against the um, uh, the Unstable. Uh, okay. Stigma, otherwise known as Jane Storm and Vin Gerard. Now, is Vin in WWE now? Uh, Vin Gerard is. Um, is he part of the tag team in NXT? No? No. Am I, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know Scott, somebody's in no, that tag I believe team, right? He's a Scott Baca? I, yeah, oh, Scott Parker, you're thinking of 3.0. Vin Gerard yeah, and, yeah. and 3.0 are completely different people. Oh, okay. Vin Gerard okay. is a part of the of the IWTV uh, program. I hope I'm not revealing anything. Okay. But I, he is like one of the masterminds. Oh, okay. I apologize, Vin, if I'm revealing anything. No, nope. not sure. You mentioned earlier the Olsen twins. Now, 
I remember when they were around. Was Colin Delaney one of the Olsen twins? Yes, he was. And who was the other one? Jimmy Olsen. Jim, Jimmy Olsen. Otherwise known as Equinox 2. That's it, Equinox. Okay, thank you, Steve. All right, uh, Scott Anthony's back. Shooter has another question. Yes. <laughs> I hope <laughs> I hope we don't get anybody mad if he answer this. Who has deep pockets when traveling to shows? And who is the one that won't pot with a nickel? Oh, there's got to be somebody. I'm not sure because uh, <laughs> honestly, uh, I haven't done too many road road trip stories where right. I had to deal with that. When I first started traveling with Jakar, I would ask for everyone to like pitch in gas money until it was explained to me that's not how it works, Turtle, or something like that. I think I was being young boy, but I'm not sure. And I'm not going to drop any names because right, right. I have the way my mind is right now. I have very little memories of those experiences. Um, but I, I do know that when the times were right, people would chip in for meals. I would say Hero has deep pockets. Does he? Yeah. He's a really nice guy. I remember He's him a extremely times. nice guy. He really is. Uh, Chris, to, ever since I met him in 2006, 15 year anniversary of our friendship, Chris, I love you. Nice. Um, ever since I met him in 2006, we've been good friends. I, I have this tendency when people get signed to, to not contact him anymore because I think, feel like I'm... I know what you I, mean. I, yeah. don't, I don't want to interrupt. Like that. Not because I have anything against them. It's just that I don't want to be like that like, like red dot when they're trying to focus on getting to the right. green light. You know, I get it. That's but I, after Chris got released the first time, we were like right back up. I, I am very grateful for my friendship with Chris Hero, and yeah. I love him. I'm very sure much. you've learned a lot from him for sure, because he is one of the the most talented yeah, wrestlers fact, in he, the world he, today. He, still, absolutely, and I look forward to when this pandemic lightens up and he can actually come back and wrestle and show us why he's one of the best in the world. Absolutely. Um, one of the things I'm proud of Chris, uh, he got me my one. Uh, the one time I worked for Limitless Wrestling, I was the on call when he wrestled Zack Sabre Jr. Oh, me. nice. That's cool. That match is available on YouTube and also on IWTV. Yes. And you can check that out, of course, on the Limitless uh, Wrestling YouTube page. Now, I got a question. Now, I think I'm going to start asking most guests. I was think, trying to think of new questions to ask people. Did Has anyone ever given a hard time of not wanting to put you over? You know, I... I don't know. I gotta let me. I'm not really good with wrestling politics. Right. I, I'm to hang out, yep. wrestle, hopefully free food, hopefully <laughs> pray that my dreams of finding a girlfriend will happen. And unfortunately, that is after 15 plus years, going on 16, I've still not found my pantyhose playmate. But uh, uh, <laughs> had to get that one in yep. this one. Sorry about that. That's, That's all right. I'll drop that. But um, <laughs> most of the time, it's just business as usual. But as far if someone has never had an issue putting me over, I've never heard it. Okay, great. Uh, uh, although I will, I yeah. have to own up to this right now. Okay. Um, one reason why I was so happy that the Canada trip happened last year, um, or two years ago, technically. Thank God it's not 20. Goodbye, 2020. I wish I could. Yeah, no I kidding. I, I wish I could flip the bird on the air. I'm not going to, so I'll do the peace sign. <laughs> yeah, but, awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, but uh, <laughs> where was I going again? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> interspecies wrestling. Um when you went to Canada. Well, I went to Canada 10 years before that. Everyone probably remembers this. I worked a match with Giant Tiger. Oh, wow. Um, and you got to understand, at that point in my career, I was not used to working for a promotion that um, did not run as often as Interspecies is able to. Right. And um, this is, I take full responsibility for this. You got to understand, I was young and right. I did not understand. Uh, me and Giant Tiger have been building this matchup for seven months. Yep. And um, I when I found out that um, he was going to win, I um, did not react good. I never said I would not put him over, but they did change the um, they finish, changed the finish to like a, a DQ victory for me because I, apparently, apparently, and I only learned this years later. My reason I gave was because I had a match in Connecticut next week. And I, I I can't believe I even said this. I could not look weak, and I right. took full responsibility. There was a reason why I was not like on interspecies wrestling shows for a long time. I take full responsibility for this, and which is saying something because Mike Roch is the one who dubbed me the ambassador for independent wrestling, which is oh. a, a compliment and right. it's and it's, and it's something that I still don't know if I earned the right to, but he felt I did. So he calls me that every time. Uh, Mr. Roch, if you're watching, I apologize if I'm revealing anything I shouldn't, but I do take full responsibility for that. In the end, what happened happened and we got past it. Moving on. All right. So we got three more questions. Maverick Wild. Hello, Maverick. Whose idea was the puppet? 
I can't believe I sold for the puppet. You What's know, the puppet story? You got to tell I forgot puppet. to bring the puppet with okay. me. But I, and <laughs> and I you were going to bring it? I forgot. Oh. I have a dog now that whenever he comes to my house, house, he would go for my stuffed animals. And my right. stuffed animals are very treacherous to me. Yep. So I put them down in my downstairs closet where you can't open it. <laughs> I forgot to bring the puppet. Ah. And, uh, so it's green. It probably would not come off good with the yeah, screen. Yeah, with the green here. screen. Yeah, we would have been in big trouble Spoiler with that. Spoiler, people. Nice setup here. It's a green screen. Yeah. But anyhow, as I was saying... Uh, I can't remember the guy's name, and if you're watching, I apologize. It's just been a while since we reached out to each other. But look up the the puppeteer Gringo. Okay. Uh, Green. The person that was behind Gringo is the one that got the turtle puppet made for me. All right. And Mav sold it. I, I'm still trying to remember where that happened. Okay. Mav, please comment if when this video goes live. I we need to we need to do a follow up story on this. Yes. All right, David Baker. Hello, one. David. Favorite tag partner and favorite opponent. That's a tough question. You've had, you've had a lot of different tag partners. So. I would have to say that I'm more of a tag team expert. Right. I got to give a shout out to Rob Arujo. We won so many Rob, different... Rob, the giant. Rob probably is ready to strangle me every time because he's probably thinking it's a rib that we're still teaming at times. Then, But Robbie's an awesome wrestler. He I mean, really is. I, I always see him as like taller than me. Yeah, right. <laughs> Size does not matter. Robbie's a yep. much better wrestler than I am. But Rob and me, I would have to say our my best tag success is with him. My favorite partner would have to be... Uh, Obviously, uh, Dick Lane. I, uh, however, me and Dick, I when when me and Dick first got paired up together, yeah. I never expected that our relationship would go almost seven years on now. Nice. And we've been. We've he's been, a really great guy. He's a really great guy, and I, I definitely hope all of you tune in this Friday to check out how when he defends the NCW yes. Championship against Mike Montero, along with several other great matches yep. at NCW Reunion Twenty Four. Yeah, on iPay-Per-View. On iPay-Per-View. Yep. And then what we were saying, and, and then Friday, next, th this Friday or next Friday? This Friday. This Friday, they're, they're having another, is, what show is that? Is that the same one? That is the only one. The only one. Okay, yeah. but so they're not doing any more virtual shows. They're going to have fans after this one? Stay tuned. Okay, Stay beautiful. Tuned. All right, so that right now we're not ready to bring the fans back just yet, but that doesn't mean that NCW is going away again. All I can say is stay tuned. Okay. I know you didn't say that you didn't have a lot of road stories, but this guy wants to know if you have a road story because I think he's ridden with you. Devin Blaze, I need road stories. To be honest, Turtle was great to ride with. Hmm. Who's I, it? Devin's an awesome wrestler. I, I miss the Minutemen, Devin. No uh, doubt him and Tommy. Yes. Good team. Yes, they were part of that that Beyond trilogy with them and the Hoods and, of course, yeah. NYFBO, which you might remember now from the Inner Circle in AEW. Yep. And they also were part of Crusades for Change at Crusade. Beyond. And Pazuzu. And it, yeah. Uh, but I would have to say uh, best road story, which somehow one of my favorite stories is like when Beyond and Jakara did this studio taping doubleheader training session with Quackabush, somehow without speeding, I managed to get an entire car load there in four hours even. Which Not is bad. supposed to be a record. Uh, we didn't stop. It just, which is, it just happened. It just happened. There you go. Uh, that's one story. I would have to say another story. It's like back before I started wrestling, me and my friends Kevin and Greg once went to a Ring of Honor show. Now I, I got to admit, at the time I was not good at staying awake at the middle of the night. And unfortunately, I was the only one that could. Draw, well, I think Greg could, but he was passed out. Uh, we were almost on the way home, and all of a sudden I hear Steve, watch out! And we almost like literally almost blared into a tree, like five hundred feet from the house. Wow. That good, was thing, cool. good thing they woke up at the time. Yes. Another road story I would have to have is all the times I showed up unannounced to Jakar and being welcomed open. Nice. Um, I would have to say another road story is when I literally flew myself out to Chicago to watch the ladder match between the Briscoes and Steen and Generico. Oh, ROH. Because I truly thought Danielson was going to win back the ROH belt that night and McGinnis won it the, night, the next month after, which I was at. I think I was at nearly every East Coast Ring of Honor show from 2006 to like 2009. Wow. I was at the, all the ones from 2002 to 2004. I catered them all except for the first one that they had in Wakefield. Oh, wow. Now, I, I did was... you work on the Pro Wrestle Marathon which show? One? Which one is that? That was the one in Abington, Mass, that they canceled the Sunday show. They had it Friday night, Saturday. I'm not sure. I've, I've had... I want to say you. I thought you were. I'm not sure. It's been a while since I've heard that. I just, right. I don't know. That, that, it's right. been so long since I heard that name. I I need to learn more about that. I just don't know. <laughs> All right. So before we play the name game, let's just talk about some stuff through your, through you know in your career. I know you worked. You told me you worked for a Ring Crew for Ring of Honor for about what three to five years or something like that. Something like that. How did all that come about? I just called up the office, yeah. introduced myself, said I just wanted to help out, and after a while, I just became 
one of the boys and I was every time I was down until Sinclair bought it, I was basically allowed to help out whenever I wanted. Nice. And well, who was in charge of like, who would you contact to let them know you were coming? You know, it's been was so- Was it delirious or? I don't know. It's been so long since I've, I've followed those guys. Yeah. Nothing personal if you're all watching this. It's just, that's that part of my life was so long ago that right. I, it's just, I do, I would have to say it was the students. I think it was Pelly and uh, and uh, Shane Hagedorn and yeah. Bobby Dempsey were the ones okay. that usually looked out for me. When Chris was there, he would watch right. my back. Um, did you um, Did you know Derek? Dempsey too? Yes, I did. That was very, very sad what happened with Derek. They were, now Bobby don't wrestle no more, huh? If he, I haven't seen him at if least. If he does, he doesn't do it as often. Right. He was, like, both of them, very talented kids. Yeah. Both of them. And I was so sad. It really was so sad. I loved doing a lot of students, away. but they, he did? Yeah. Bobby's brother passed away years ago. You didn't know that? Not until just now. Yeah. I didn't know it because I couldn't find him. Like, I didn't know. And then finally, I Googled someone that lived in the Pennsylvania and they told me. Sorry, bud. I didn't know. I thought you knew. It was like over oh, six, seven years ago. Not Bobby. Oh, I know Bobby, but I didn't know Derek had passed. I got to reach yeah. out to him. Uh, yeah. Bobby, if you're watching this, I'm so sorry for your yeah, loss. Bobby, sorry too, but um, how seven about- Seven years too late. And I know there's no excuse for that, but I'm truly sorry. Oh, speaking of passing, I want to- I want to say to my old acquaintance friend, uh, Sharon, who was part of the, the camera crew for Smart Mart Video, now part of IWTV, who recently passed away last week. I'm sorry just to hear like, that. Just like Larry Sweeney, we miss you. You were taken from us way too soon, and I hope to see you in the next lifetime. And Larry Sweeney, who you know passed away years ago, and uh, that was a tremendous loss for yes. us. And what a talent, though. I mean, that guy was unbelievably he, great. I, if he, he was still alive today, I still believe, even if he wasn't a manager or a wrestler, he would have been giving back to this business in oh, yeah. some way. Oh, he probably would have definitely he been would, working that's in why the was WWE. So, that's, or AEW or yep. some promote or even Ring of Honor. He would have well, done. If he, if he didn't pass away, he would have definitely made it because AEW wasn't around for so long. He would have definitely been in WWE. Well, for all we know, he would have worked with Jimmy Jacobs as, uh, uh, yeah. outside of him in, in Impact Wrestling. He was a lot something. of great he guys. He had so much to give and he was taking that from us way too yeah. soon. A lot of very very sad. All right, um, we like I told you earlier, we were both in the wrestling road diaries. Yes, you we actually were. had a part in it. I'm just like in it as the camera goes by. Okay, me. So uh, people may not know this: the Bushwhackers and the American Dragon is what got me into saying I want to really give this a shot, even though oh, I've wow. always believed that wrestling was real. Right. I believe that anyone named a dog lived in a doghouse that was the size inside of a house. I believe that Jake the Snake literally lied on his stomach and slivered like a snake going, <laughs> people, I believe that, that Coco Beware could fly with the bird. Right. I literally believe that anyone's character could have the power of their character. Right. That's how much I, and I'm the one that believed that that I saw the NWO angle in black and white, then. Bad guys, they need to be beated. WCW, good guys. Anyone yep. that's booed in WCW, boo them. This, it was <laughs> not, it, I was not involved to that at that point. Right. Okay. But uh, you're, anyhow, about the wrestling road, I, yeah. I, of course, Dragon knew me and Colt knew me, and I right. offered them a place to stay because, of course, I wanted, I was lonely and I wanted people at my house. Yep. And they, we all went out to Chili's that night and nice. they stayed at my house. And I, if so, Zoe, I think I tried to hook you up with, I tried to hook my sister up with Brian Taylor. <laughs> I, needless to say, I think he's well spoken for now. Yeah, I think so too. But what a great guy he, he is! is extremely and, and great guy, so talented, and Colt too. Yeah, I miss I both mean, of them: Colt, Brian, and Sal Renaro, who's a part of that. We got to give a shout yeah, to the great Sal, Sal Velotoro member. He, yep, I got power to you guys. And uh, by the way, for anyone that still has the Wrestling Road Diary DVD, for those that don't watch the chapter screens, if you pay attention to the chapter screen, you might actually see an extended uh, version of the hot tub scene. Guys, got to check the hot tub soon. And by the way, please get your shots because I want to go back to the hot tub soon. My back needs it. All please right. get your shot. Um, now, you wrestled for Bob Evans' EPW also, right? Yes. Do you have any stories from working for Bob? Um, I would have to say the most recent one when we had a show uh, right uh, in 2019. My mom uh, just celebrated her birthday, I think, that night. I nearly popped my leg out that night, but I Ooh. ended up winning the Rhode Island Rumble for the second time. Oh, nice. I've actually won every championship in EPW except the heavyweight title, which if I told Bob I won, I hope to get that someday. Right. But Bob has always been a great... Bob once told me that I was a godsend to him. Now, I really can't get into why because that's his business. Right. But let's just say him meeting me helped him prepare for meeting someone 
important in his life. And I'm very grateful. That's the nice. highest compliment I probably will ever receive in wrestling, being told I'm a godsend to someone. And I, nice. I love Bob Evans. I know people might think of him as hokey or like too old schooly, but to me, there's a, Bob Evans was the perfect trainer for me. If I hadn't trained with Bob Evans, I probably would have been out of wrestling within two years because I would have been trying to do flips and stuff that my body right. was just already back then. Bob trained to. so many people. He's had his hands on helping not, so, so <laughs> many people. Indeed. And I, mean, I, I'm very happy that Mike Bennett and Maria Canellas just recently got signed to ring of honor. Yeah. So I'm glad to see that at least one, one of us from the old slam uh, Academy is still striving along. Right. All right. Um, how about, um, how about uh, you, 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 you mentioned how, um, you know, like you got into wrestling because like the bushwhackers and stuff like that. Have you been on any shows with any real big names that you would just like, couldn't wait to go over and say hi to at least, you oh, know, like uh, that's way too many. I, I'm still pinching myself that I once worked at a car show with Juice and Thunder Liger and I wow. shared the, the, the locker room. And because I was still taught that you weren't supposed to like ask fellow wrestlers for photos, I regret not ever getting a photo with him yeah. back when he, when I went out to Vegas for the ring of honor shows when New Japan had a show in, in, in California when they did that triple shot a few years right. back. I thought about getting a photo with him. It was like, it'd be too weird just going up as a friend. But that's something. And like all the time, all the wrestlers that, that were at King of Trios in Jakar, like it, when I literally look at the locker room of who's who back then, of, from England, Japan, right. Mexico, that just the people that I've shared the locker room with, yeah. especially in Ring of Honor, like, holy shell. Yeah. What did I do to get to this place? Right. I mean, like, I, you say I'm a nice guy. Sometimes nice guys don't finish last or so. I forget the saying. Nice guys finish last. Nice say. guys finish last. But it's like somehow I managed to stride along and stay, stay, stay in, like, position for first. It's just like, I, I, like, I'm blown away by the people that if you say the name Turtle, people were like, oh, hi, Steve. Yep. Well, you, like I said, you're very well uh, known and my, very well liked. My liked. nephews, my brothers, my sisters, they don't even call me Steve or Mark anymore. My full really? name, by the way, is Mark Stephen Weiner Jr. Everyone just calls me Turtle now. Nice. Except at work. Well, no, my, my shoot job calls me work. Well, yeah, you have to call. Yeah. Yeah. Because you have a name tag on? Is yeah. that why? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I don't have a name tag. Oh, I was going to say. They don't, they don't want, want you to put no, turtle. No, going to call me turtle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Listen, name game. There's so many names to mention and oh. stuff, okay? Um, I'm just going to start going. How about a Johnny Idol? One of the best that has ever wrestled in New England. If, there were, there, if he hasn't been already inducted in the New England Hall of Fame, he should eventually. I think he is. I think he just got in like two years ago. And before you ask, I, I yeah. would be honored if I ever get invited in, but I don't know if, or think if I've done enough to justify Steve the Turtle being inducted. But I would Listen, be man, you had a 16-year career. This, you know, I don't see what, what else you'd need. I mean, they put a, a, a lot of people. There's no reason why you shouldn't go in. How about um the late, great Nick, Nick, Nick Steele? Nick Steele was one of the first people I ever had a one-on-one -on -one match with. Really? And... Uh, I remember being very intimidated because of the I chops. Bet, I bet. Uh, and um, but Nick was a professional and he took very good care of me. That's awesome. I miss Nick. I wish he was still here with us. My heart goes out to all the Top Rope wrestling crew. Top Rope is still around, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Please don't go anywhere, Top Rope. I miss I miss that PAL Hall. But I hope they're they're a great product here in New England and yep. should be, have more eyes on them, just like everyone in New England. I'm going to try to get as much name dropping as I can. Awesome. I, how, I got how, a lot. I got to get a broom when I'm done here because I'm going to be dropping so many names. I got to sweep up. All right. How about uh, Team Fist, Chuck Taylor, Gran Akuma, and Icarus? Don't forget Johnny Gargano was a part of that. Oh, he was. That's right. You're right. Yes. He was. I forgot about Some that. Some of the most professional men I've ever worked with. Akuma, uh, if you follow his Twitter account, please follow uh, Gran Akuma's Twitter account. Um, you will um, you'll be very insightful of his opinions in pro wrestling. I'm also very honored that I got to wrestle Fist when Chuck Taylor was uh, in was the IWA Mid South Heavyweight Champion right oh, before wow. he dropped it to Dingo, uh, and uh, the night three of King of Trios, where I teamed up with uh, Ultimo Breakfast, otherwise known as uh, a very good professional wrestler, aka Dasher Hatfield, and Sammy Callahan. We were Green Eggs at Sam. Oh wow! Okay. And uh, there's a funny thing here. You're gonna love this story. Chris Harrow right. told me this. Um, some of you who may have seen that match may remember that uh, during the near conclusion of it, I decided to do a uh, dive. And that's saying it lightly. Here's what happened. I, <laughs> I was told to do something else and I didn't understand. So I, I, there were followers going for an Aisha boot saw. So I bounce from the bottom rope, bounce back to the apron and fall on top of everyone. <laughs> and it was like, oh my God, this is the greatest thing. Six, right? six spin, four. And the punchline of the story, Someone in Texas tried to do the same thing and broke his legs. Wow. The most simplest yep. 
dive you could do and somehow you break a leg. That's, I saw that. I, I, I got it. I'm like trying to figure out how did I inspire a move that breaks someone? Right. I hope whoever you are, I hope your leg is very healed, but please don't try this at home. Okay. Now, I'm a little confused. The princess panty, pantyhose princess, pa princess, yeah, yeah, princess Delilah Hayden. Yes. Okay. So that's the next name. Yes. She's been a great guest here twice. Yes, she is. I hope, I hope one day we can have all four of us here. That'd be awesome. Although you're going to have to probably chain Curry Boy down. Yeah. He's is gonna he, be is like, he crazy? Yes. All right. But uh, Delilah, one of the best sweethearts I've ever worked with. She's awesome. She yes. really is. She's going to be a great mom someday. Yes. You're going to be a great mom someday, Delilah. Something that we, we and Delilah have in common is we both have guinea pigs. Mm. So we, I like to check her little videos out, her and Dennis, yeah. when only they do that. The only person that would actually welcome the nickname Princess Pantyhose. She's the only one, huh? You'd be surprised. <laughs> right. You'd be surprised, but you're the only one that does it openly. Okay. How about um, Buddy Romano? Buddy, I had a great uh, time with. I used to work with him in the USWF, which okay. is an old backyard, side yard promotion. Um, I, by the way, to everyone, all my alumnus in the USWF, Kevin E., Michael Lilas, Too Sexy Travis Savage, Grandmaster of Funk, um, and uh, uh, Glenn Lilas, and Michael Lilas. Uh, I miss you guys. Uh, and of course, lover boy, Buddy Romato. Buddy, a tremendous talent. That Very talented. I, I was honored to work him on my birthday a few years ago. Nice. I, I the, the result was not what I was hoping for, especially since it was my birthday, but right. it was what it was. Um, also, the house didn't really justify the, the switch, but it, it happened. Okay. But I'm, I like that match. I'm very honored with it. I'm grateful. Despite a lot of issues, I'm grateful to everything that NCW has ever done for me. NCW is a promotion that more people should have their eyes on. Yes. Because you'd be surprised just how many people, good wrestlers that we're going to be talking right. about, have come out of that or at least gotten their proof. And now we have more women there. Right. And, and that's not me being sexist, people. We have more great women wrestlers there. Yep. And more women wrestlers that are probably going to be traveling all across New England and outside of New England. In right the now, there's a lot of great women wrestlers in New England. Absolutely. They really are. And especially when you check out the event. This Friday night, we're going to have a some version of a women's battle royal. And I apologize to the promoters at TW that I can't remember the name. The NCW ran one show last year before the pandemic right. happened, and they had their first ever match. It was like their equivalent of the Oxbaker Cup, which is basically like a Royal Rumble that you can be eliminated by going from over the top rope, pinfall, or submission. Oh, okay. They're having a women's version of it this Friday night. All right. Well, speaking that we're bringing up, you know, women right now, how about Aunt Veda Scott? Amazing. Very happy where all she's doing right now. Right. I miss you, Veda. Fellow Providence, Rhode Islander, by the way. Okay, great. How about uh, Isana? Isana. Amazing. Okay. Uh, Kimberly. I miss Kim very much. She's doing great things in AEW. Yes, she is. Is it? No, Impact. 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 I'm sorry. Sorry about but that. But then again, you never know when you're going to see someone from Impact jump over to right. AEW, vice versa. Yep. All right. Uh, Cole Cabana. <laughs> One of the most talented, funny and professional wrestlers I've ever seen. I was honored to call at one of his uh, matches at the King of Trios back in 010, 012, where he worked an eight-man match, and I got to call, and again with name dropping, I got to call a match that featured Osaka Pro Wrestlers. Oh, wow. And of course, Darkness Crowdtree, and um, I got to a match that featured King Kutaro and Ebisan, and a, and a Japanese Colonel Sanders, nice. and 3.0, and a game of Duck Duck Goose. And, a, and also, I did commentary with Leonard F. Jakarson and, yeah. and a rubber chicken. All right. I'm serious. A rubber chicken with a cameo by Chuck Taylor. How about a Gavin Loudspeaker? One of my favorite ring announcers of all time. The old the Mr. Neil, as I call him, because he always, I got a Neil to get this off. up. Uh, he's yeah, good. He's got to be practicing like on the stairs. Right? I don't know what he's doing right now because I believe, believe uh, he's out west now. But I hope oh, for okay. all the best, Gavin. All right. How about... Sydney Bacabella. One of the best minds ever. Um, very concerned when I feel like he uh, thinks it's a different year than it actually is. I, I was I, confused when he was I, a guest here. I know. I, I That was like the episode. I was, if I was going to watch I, Newsflash, by the way, I'm going to be fully honest. I, I did not want to be disrespectful for this. So I felt that the best thing I could do was not watch a single episode when I came on for the <laughs> first time. And then when this gets uploaded to YouTube later on, after rewatching this, go back and then watch everything. But I will admit, <laughs> I try to watch Sydney's at first, and I was right. If I watch Sydney's, I'm going to have the bar set so high, I'm not going to be able to top he, it. He, he, he was unbelievable. Like you, I'm sorry. Like when I let you know what happened with Derek, mm. I have, he didn't know that the Grand Wizard had passed away. 
in, in 1981 or something like that. <laughs> so it was years. a very, it was a strange interview. And on top of it, Dick, my producer, threw him out. Oh. <laughs> so. <laughs> I gotta see that. It was crazy. All right, how about this? I haven't brought this guy's name up in a while. How about Fat Pants? Todd Sinclair. Oh, one of the best referees out there. Absolutely. I, a huge Bruins fan, too. I think I, Todd refereed one match of mine back in Fall River. Uh, I could be wrong, though. I wish people ran that old armory across yeah. from the PLL because I, that's one of my favorite buildings I ever wrestled in. Oh, okay. I, only time I ever got to wrestle a match, I had two rings in it. All right. Have you uh, run across a team that's uh, starting to really kill it in AEW? Bear Country. I have. Bear Country used to be a part of uh, the old... Uh, Oh, but there was a promotion. Another promotion besides Beyond Wrestling that I cannot remember. I'm just, to the promoters of that promotion. I apologize. Creative Pro? No, no, it was a oh. New England promotion. They used oh, it was to in run, New England. They used to run FET. Um, I forgot what it was. Oh, what? 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 Yeah, yeah, what? Yeah, both Bear Country uh, showed up at what? Then they debuted at Beyond. They're killing an AEW. Yeah. I think they're going to be talked about for a while to come. I do too. I really do. How about uh, Francis O'Rourke? Remember Francis O'Rourke? Yeah. Biff Busick. Oh, Biff Busick. And in Chikara, oh, oh, what was their other promote? Wrestling is art. Yeah, the, I saw him in Haverhill, Mass. He was Francis O'Rourke. But here's a funny Biff Busick story. We have, many people may not remember this, but Bob Evans, many years ago, had this concept called Iron Week, where we had, ran six shows. On one of those shows, I wrestled a Biff Busick before he went down to Texas and Canada. Oh, wow. So I basically got to meet him pre-Lance Storm, pre-Funaki, Pre whatever other trainers that made him as awesome as he is now. Now, didn't Bob do um, Iron Man matches seven days in a row or something? Six, was six days in a row. I, I remember believe, when he did I've that. I've heard. I've heard he's contemplating doing it one more time. But I. I that's an incredible feat, man, to do that every. You know, that's tough. It is. I hopefully now with the technology we can actually stream it or something. That would be really cool. We didn't. I, have, I definitely would love to get Bob IW, here. We didn't have IWT. I, he's never been here before. No, not yet. I know. Bob, Tell me you about it. Get no. your, you got to yeah. get your Evans here on the ring. Yeah, I got to hit him up. I really do. How about um. Daniel Garcia. Daniel Garcia. You know Daniel? Oh, yeah. He's the Limitless and C4 champion. Yes. I got to be honest. I, I was so overblown with wrestling. I need to check out all the WrestleMania weekend events. Right. Um, by the way, I run a Facebook page called WrestleMania Week where I try to get... Oh, you do? I try to uh, get as much information out of every kind of wrestling event that's happening, either WWE or non-WWE related that week. Oh, okay. Um. I, I haven't been up to date on it because I didn't know what this pandemic, if it was going to get canceled again. So. Right, right. But I do believe that he had one of the best matches of the WrestleMania weekend and on the first show of the weekend. So I highly recommend it. He's going to be someone to talk about for a while. Now. Yeah, I heard he had a really great match with Lee Moriarty. I believe that's the match. That's the match, yeah. <sighs> Incredible. How about um, how about we talk about a couple guys that just been signed? Anthony Green. Oh, August Gray. Gray. It's all good. Lisa, it's A. Hey, he's still got to keep the AG. So, it's I mean. AG, yep. Um, I, I awesome. love Anthony. He he has transformed himself so much. I remember when he was a referee. Yep. And he transformed. He's much better than I could ever possibly be. And I'm so happy for all the success. It was great to see him. He got, I mean, obviously, with the WWE, when, they, when he reported there, they were like, this kid's ready for TV now. Future which was fantastic. Future Cruiserweight champion. Future North American champion, future NXT champion. You got it. He will not be stuck on 205 Live forever. Future world champion, I hope. Well, NXT is a world champion, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think I think you're right, Joe. I really I mean that company's great. NXT is just a lot of people will say, oh, it's not as good as, you know, like Raw Smack to some people. But most people like like me or you who know, you know, no watch, good wrestling. Watch Walter versus NXT is the best. Watch Walter versus E I e e Dragonoff. Yeah. In NXT UK, you know what I'm talking Oh, about. absolutely. No, NXT is definitely, in my eyes, the best product out there. And UK. I'm looking forward to any other NXT that pops up. Go ahead. All right. We only got so much time. All right. How about um, Christian Casanova? Christian Casanova. I'm so happy that he recently got signed. Yeah, me one too. One of the best out there. And I think one of the best to come out of chaotic wrestling, to come out of beyond wrestling. I think he was a part of Evolve before it shut down. Yep. I believe that he's going to be talked about for a while. Uh, you'd be surprised when you actually look at, when you go territorial, right. how many people have actually come out of New England that we still talk about to this day. It's true. Josh Briggs got signed. He yeah. has, we haven't seen him come up on TV yet, but I'm sure it will happen sooner or later. Sooner mm -hmm. than later. Yeah, speaking of Oni Lorcan, a.k.a. Yes. Fifth Music, to Martin Stone, and I forgot his other name, uh, please get well soon. 
Danny Birch. Danny Birch. Danny Birch. Remember, Great. autistic. Sometimes I bleep. All right. How about uh, Shea Cash? Shea Cash. Uh, one half of the heavy hitters. Yes. Now part of the hoods. Yeah. I like that, that they're all together. Like I do. I like that a I lot. Love, I saw the shirt the other day. I shared yeah. it on I Facebook. Love, I love that guy. I hope he's around for some a long time. I miss his tattoo partner. And I still owe him chocolate pretzels. Ah, he okay. Know, he'll know what exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. I owe you a bag of chocolate pretzels. Please remind me. I got to ask you. The, the girl I, I love the most in wrestling, Mandy Leon. Hmm. Very pretty. Oh, my God. Very, very pretty. Yeah. But we can't go, we can't get into that kind of terror. No, but, she's but all great, I'm saying is she's beautiful. Though. Very beautiful. She's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Just puts a smile on my face. Where I went to a Ring of Honor show in Lowell. And you know Chris Sullivan, Lucky Pro Wrestling? Yes, I do. Chris taps me on the shoulder and he says, you want your picture taken with Mandy Leon? I said, who wouldn't? Right? He turns, he says, look. I, so, get the, I get the opinion when that question is asked. If someone ever said, nah, you're about to see like 30 guys like all like, so, what did you say? But it turned into like a scene from the Muppet movie. Listen, it gets better though. So I said, yeah, come on, Jarzy. And I pushed my grandson towards her, right? And she goes, you want your picture taken with me? And he said, no, but he does. And he pointed at me. <laughs> <laughs> but then, <laughs> he threw me right under the bus. Wait, I thought he was throwing you over the bus. Oh, boy, she is, she is beautiful. I can't help it. I love Mandy Leon. Mm -hmm. All right, Timmy Kilgore. Timmy Kilgore, one of the unsung heroes of NCW. His entrances that he's been doing with the, uh, like a, uh, what am I looking for? Uh, like a show, like a Broadway show. Yes. He's amazing. I hit him up when I saw the first one. He, it's really good, man. It's not like some guy trying to do it and he's horrible. He's really good at it. He's extremely good. As a matter of fact, he'll be on this Friday night's NCW. <laughs> I'm going to stop saying it. This Friday night's NCW show, Kilgore, I think will be in action. Now, NCW, John Casey? Yes. Yes, okay. Or just wanted to make JC sure. Marks. And JC Marks, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, how about um, a guy that I like a lot? A little crazy, El Presidente, Pinky Sanchez. Oh, Pinky Sanchez. <laughs> oh, Pinky, 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 Pinky Sanchez. Okay, I don't want to bury Pinky because I'm not right. a dude. So, but we, he and I had three, maybe two great matches with each other. Um, one is available. Both I, both were from Beyond Wrestling. Pinky wants to have a rubber match someday before I retire. I owe him that. Nice. He probably will be future tag team champion someday. Many people would be surprised by my win-loss record and my title history. I, it almost non-existent to... Bare minimum compared to some of my peers out there. I would have loved. I would have loved to have done the octopus with all these belts, even though I would right. have fell back on my shell. But the octopus, John Grisham, one of my favorites as well. He's incredible. incredible. How many belts he hold right now? Do you know? Well, just one. Just one now, you're, right now. You're tired. Okay. Of Is he tag team champ though? I think actually his his two fellow foundation members, Rhett Titus and uh, I'm trying to remember his name. Rhett right. Titus and. Uh, uh, Tracy Williams? Yes. Are the tag yeah. team champions. Actually, solid Hot sauce. Champions. Hot sauce. Hot sauce. Yes. All right. How about uh, a guy that I, I enjoy watching wrestle a lot, Dan Barry? Well, one of my favorites. I miss him and Team Tremendous. His partner, I think. Uh, Bill Carr. Bill Carr just made his debut for Ring of Honor. Did he really? I'm not going to spoil it, but watch the recent Ring of Honor 19th anniversary pay-per-view, and you'll be sure to get your Bill Carr. Nice. That's awesome. Glad to hear that. How about... um? I, you wrestled uh, for Liberty States, right? Yes. Todd Sopel. Todd Sopel gave me an opportunity in a time when I absolutely needed it. Um, That's good. <laughs> yes, and I am very grateful. I do miss Liberty States. I hope the best for Todd, but I, so all good things must come to an end. Right. Okay. I, I, that one story I will tell is that after my dad passed, uh, I believe like on the first or second anniversary of, of what his birthday would have been, Todd offered to let me wrestle on that show, and I had to pull out because it was just too emotional. And I've been meaning to make that it up That was nice him. of him. That was nice. I was even going to come out to a song just because I felt like it. I, for some reason, I wanted to come out to Hootie and Blowfish's Time. Yeah. That's a good tune. It is. I still want to come out to it someday, but right. it, just, it didn't work out. But okay. It, I wish if he ever does start working again I, or running shows again, I would love to make that up to him. Awesome. All right. How about uh, Dr. Heresy? One of the best minds ever in the business. He should definitely, if he's, I hope he's still involved in wrestling in some way if he's not in the ring anymore. Doc, I hope to see you soon. Maybe at the next uh, New England Hall of Fame. Yeah, that would be great. He's looking great. He's lost, he dropped some weight. Looks fantastic. Hmm. All right. How about um, a guy that I don't bring up that often here? Christian Angus. Christian Angus. Oh, do you remember Christian? Yes, Big I do. Yeah. I worked him uh, for the EPW television title. I um, lost a match to him, and then he was stripped of the belt. And I won the Rhode Island Rumble by entering number 30. 
and I lost it four days later. Ah, oh. but it was great to work with Christian and guys. Okay, how about um? Why don't you talk about your turtles in time tag team part? Your, your, your Dick, group. Dick Lane is um, one of the best talents out there. Yep, he's someone that I would highly recommend people uh, keep an eye on. I do wish he could break out of New England more often. But right, he, one of his. He's very dedicated to the promotions he works for. And yes, he is. Also, he he's very comfortable in the in the life he works right now, the lifestyle of of like where he chooses to work. And right. that's what he likes to stay with. Curry Boy? I don't know a lot about Curry Boy. Curry Boy is even a mystery to me. And I'm still surprised to this day that I haven't been sued by New Japan Pro Wrestling. Well, you did say, too, that Curry Boy was crazy. Early, you said he was crazy. Yes. And, and, uh, and who's, is Delilah in the, in the group, too, right? The last one? Yep. Um... <laughs> How do I put this in a polite way? Um, you know what? You probably get this reference. Waifu. Okay. It's a Japanese anime term. Perfect waifu. No, she is awesome. And uh, Derek's awesome too. Yeah. Dennis. Yeah. Great, great people. How about on... Um, oh, so we are going. Dennis Condre. Yeah. One of the best workers I see when he's outside the mask. He's definitely... Uh, they, all of them guys. Like I said, I mean, I didn't know any of them until I met Todd Graham. Yeah. And, and Dennis, I'm then, sorry I didn't mention you more, but I thought we were, keep, we were keeping that a secret. I guess not. There you go. How about... um? Tony Deppin. One of the best out there. Another member of Fist. One of the last of yeah. Fist. Uh, he, what he's doing Ring of Honor now and the independence, he's, he's basically been like the Iron Man this year because I think he's clocked in more in-ring time than any other wrestler. Right. You look at how many Iron Man matches he's been in. I didn't see the last Ring of Honor pay-per-view, so you did, right? I So Homicide, Homic Brody King, King, Tony Deppin, and who else? Chris so Dickinson. <sighs> That's a hell of a group right there. Yes. I and do. I'm a huge Homicide fan. So I'm saying, you know, I, God bless him. I believe he's knocking on 30 years coming up. If he hasn't already, I think he just celebrated 25, but he's knocking on 30. Yeah, it's so crazy. Huh? The fact and he's, he's still, done so much. I think he's working with NWA now, too. I believe so. I yeah. was there when he won the Ring of Honor World title. One of the best nights of my life. I mean, we traveled in a snowstorm the night right. before. Um, and uh, it was. I feel bad that we only had an hour because there's still so much we've got to talk about. Right. Well, how about, how about we bring Eddie Kingston? One of my favorites. Eddie, I hope you're doing well. I, would, I was so happy he got to main event a pay-per-view. That was awesome. I was so I was, happy to see him on TV. Same. I look forward to seeing what him and Moxley do as a team going forward. Because uh, him, him and Homicide and, and Eddie at, at the House of Hardcores when I would cater, my grandson, they treated him so good. His, his mom had passed away of a drug overdose. And, you know, they knew. So they'd pull them aside, talk to him. It just, it, it just, I'm just saying, like, you look at guys like that, they don't look like they're the teddy bear type and i'm trying i don't want to ruin their reputations or anything you know what i mean but yeah. really really good guys eddie is, is, is has always been like a nice person to me so that's what I'm yeah thinking. he really is all right how about uh lumberjake one of the the fluff he looks like a teddy bear built like a grizzly bear a force to be reckoned with if yes he, if, when he puts his heart to it and he puts his heart to it all the time okay let's talk about a few young new like up-and-coming talent nico silva I haven't heard much of him. Okay. I, I believe he's the lion. Yes. And I believe I the actually, Rhode Island lion. I believe I was in a battle royal with him once. Very fit, very, yeah. very like intimidating. And I think if he puts his heart into it, he will be a force to reckon with going okay. forward. And I apologize for keep using that reference. That's all right. Best thing I can say. How about Channing Thomas? He will be, I believe, in the main event of NCW's ah! reunion. You set that up. Reunion there 24. This Friday night. It's him and BRT. And of course, Vin, uh, sorry, uh, Vern, I can't pronounce Vern Vicalo. Vern Vicalo in a triple fret match. That's the main event for the NCW Heavyweight Championship. BRG? BRG. Br Brett Ryan Gosling? Yeah. That was the next name, so. He's a tremendous worker as well. Big time. Uh, Alec Price. Have you seen Alec work? Alex Price. I need to look up for him more. I apologize, yeah. Mr. Price. That's all right. He's been, he's been working. He does, does work for Beyond. He works for Limitless. Uh, he comes from like the Bell Time Club. Very, very talented mm -hmm. kid. How about um, the voice in New England, Rich Palladino? Ageless. Ageless. I remember recently seeing a match from Rich when uh, Chris Hero fought JT Dunn for the right. first time at Beyond. And then seeing him like that year, and I made a comment when we were doing the live stream that Rich Palladino is ageless because he literally looks, until he recently changed himself, as soon, it's ironic, I say that comment, Drew, uh, Drew Cordero agrees with me, then all of a sudden he transforms himself. Right. Now, but I still think he's ageless. I think for as long as he wants to, he's going to be a voice for pro wrestling. Excellent. Also, if he, if, also <laughs> I hope he does uh, 
commence the ceremonies for the New England Hall of Fame and more people are respectful this time. All right. Let's talk about you work the Fenway show. Do you work one or do you work two shows? I worked four. You worked all of them? Yes. I'm going what, for five. What, what was it like? Like, how did you feel? Because, I mean, obviously, well, you you're know, from New England, so you're, red, you're a Red main, Sox fan. I still wish we were on the field, but to be in the main event of the first time that that has happened in, like, over right. 50 years or near 50 years was, like, mind-blowing. Yeah. We evolved it ever since. I mean, like, it's just... I still have yet to have a one-on-one -on -one match at that... At that it, so I do hope if the Fenway shows do happen again, I got to get that one one-on-one -on -one match in. I got I want that like Sturtle versus someone. Right. All right. How about um Max Smashmaster? One of the I think he's going to do tremendous at the New England Wrestling Academy. I agree. And um I I wish he was wrestling more, but he was a unsung hero for Jakara. Uh, he won the King of Trio, so he's a Campinotes de Parejas, former holder. And I am still glad that he's contributing to professional wrestling. Nice, yes. And well, how about his partner at the school, Chase Del Monte? Chase Del Monte. He re I believe he recently appeared at NCW, and oh, I cool. did not recognize him, so I apologize for that, Chase. But I do. Wait, didn't he tag team with? with Cashew, right? I believe so. Yeah, yeah. And I hope He's to my Chaz Cashew I want, now. I like, gotta learn. I gotta reconnect with both of them because I I feel bad. Chase is a one of the new Eng many New Englanders have won the Super Eight, and yes. he was one of them. Yeah, I'll tell. I'm, I'm actually, I, I can't say it because uh, I'll say it. I'm going the Super Eight this year. I hope Mr. Ulala doesn't see this episode then because uh, I I still I still want that match, Mr. Ulala. Mr. Best. Ulala, you are one of the unsung heroes of of independent wrestling and for the longest time i have wanted to stand across the ring with you i don't know if it'll be a, com a comedical masterpiece or a wrestling classic but i still believe before this guy's time is done in the ring and he flies off back to france to the eiffel tower to slip his tea saying ooh la la i would gotta get one turtle ooh la la match in so mr ooh la la my good sir I politely challenge you to a duel. Any time, any place, it is time to shell up. All right. So now we got a little over a minute left. You came all the way up here, but the first thing you told me when you, when you said you were going to do the show, you needed the show to be from six to seven so you could go out with your friend. So last name I'm going to give you, Joey Eastman. Joey Eastman. Just a, I remember seeing Joey Eastman when... Um, <laughs> I saw uh, IWA Mid South for the first time, and then uh, when Bob Evans and ran an EPW show, he was in the ring, and I refereed an Iron Man match with with uh, Bob and Ray Ray uh, Ray Diamond. Yeah, and uh, just to see have Joey Eastman in the ring was like it's like I I saw the first time I like got goosebumps like holy shit I'm in the ring with Joey Eastman. Right, that's and, awesome. Uh, I, I don't smoke, but I felt like I needed a cigarette after that. <laughs> and I think on that note. Yeah, I think we're going to stop, but I want to thank you for coming on the show, Steve. Absolutely. We're Please definitely going to do this again. We're definitely yeah. will. We'll give a couple months. We'll bring you back when the nice, with the nice weather, like August or something. I'm actually not booked very far ahead. I think in the next, like, 18 weeks, I got four guests. Oh, wow. So, all right. So, again, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. And it's time to shell down here on the ring. Yeah. yeah. Guys, we're out. Peace. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.